this is daytime astrophotography part two the sun now i mentioned in my moon video that it was the easiest target to find in the daytime which uh that's obviously not correct it's the sun but um anyway here you can see me just viewing through some homemade finder and a dslr and uh you see how bright it is it's it's really difficult squinting your eyes trying to see the laptop and that sort of thing and um, on this this image here you're seeing the next image five being used at one 250th of a second again at four um, that's also the image i'll use later in the video to show you the editing but here's something that can help you um, just get you a piece of cardboard and put it in front of your scope uh, to block the sun directly out of your eyes it's, uh, it's a really useful trick, um, pretty cost effective too because you've pr probably got plenty of cardboard laying around. And you might also want to put a box around your laptop, that's another good trick, um, get the glare off the screen, use umbrellas, whatever you got. Um, the video clips I showed at the beginning was, was me on the fly and uh, <laughs> just fighting it. But um, there's a lot of products out there you can get solar filters thousand oaks is probably the most well known they have full glass aperture uh, solar filters and that sort of thing and they have a really good website that shows you what you need in terms of size and match your telescope and that sort of thing and they're probably the safest bet um, they're really hard and they've got a warranty on them that they'll last you uh, an alternate option you have to be cheap is to buy a sheet of mylar or a black polymer rather and uh, you can get just a sheet of it fairly cheap and and DIY it you know and just be really careful if you do I'm not gonna go a lot into sun safety um if you're interested in this you should have already took the precautions of, of uh, checking into that because the Sun is the most dangerous target in the sky for uh, astrophotography. Um, in the past, guys were using the eyepiece filters with the, uh, the primary mirror exposed to all the sun, and they would overheat and crack, and then light would come through. And uh, you can be blinded by this if you're not careful. So um, I'm not going to recommend the DIY part of it, even though that's the route I take. Uh, because if you, if you make an error in your judgment there and you got something sloppy, then and you allow light to come through, you're gonna know it really fast. Basically what I'm saying is you need to go and, and do some research and, and check out what's safe and what's not and uh, be aware of all that and I'm not here to, to hold your hand but just exercise a lot of caution when dealing with the sun. It's, it's a dangerous object to be viewing but it's also uh, very rewarding. So that was the Coronado. That's a really interesting telescope specifically for uh, solar viewing and you can see a whole lot more prominence and um, you can see granules and solar flares and stuff with that but those guys are they're expensive they're up there around 1500 and up but something interesting you can do is go to the uh, Soho website which is NASA's um, property and uh, it's available to the public and you can check that day and see a, a current view of the Sun before you ever go out and set up. And, and if you see a lot of sunspots, then that's a good day to go check out the sun and, um, and try to record them on your own. Um, that's updated every day and it's, it's free to go on their site and check it out. Um, if you get into more advanced techniques, uh, like using hydrogen alpha filters and that sort of thing, uh, then you'll have to go to uh, another video source because I pretty much stay basic on my stuff. Um, I prefer mylar and uh, to, the, to the black polymer and generally I edit in, uh, in black and white because the sun in fact is, is all white light. It's not orange like people think it is. Um, 
But uh, anyway, yeah, the Soho website's probably the, the coolest thing you can do. Uh, give you heads up before you ever go out and even waste your time. Um, there's a lot of days where there's there's not a lot of prominence. Uh, the, the sun cycle itself is about every 11 years and it peaks towards the middle. So um, that's also an awesome time to go see the Aurora Borealis because it's more active and uh, there's different color highlights in it. But um, generally you can, um, you can view the sun as, as something to do on, on times that uh, you're, you're trying to get involved during the day and it's, it's an interesting hobby and it's uh, something that, that requires for good detail you need uh, both aperture and uh, a high focal ratio. The higher focal, focal ratio telescopes like are preferred for uh, planetary use are also ideal for the sun. Um, I'm using Orion F5 in this video so I'm just basically trying to find the sunspots but you'll see videos guys have where they're really really detailed uh, images of sunspots and you can see the, the darker areas and the lighter areas around the, the prominence and um, if that's what you want to do then you need a, a larger focal ratio telescope also. So this image is from December 1st, Soho's website. I had checked it that morning and saw that uh, there was quite a few prominences and they were in a really interesting pattern so I wanted to shoot that. Um, the next image is, is my black and white version of it. It's a little washed in contrast and that sort of thing but you can, you can definitely see that the uh, sunspots line up with the uh, representation that they have. and. Uh, it's really easy uh, editing steps. Only two um, two main edits that you that you need to make. Uh, there's other ways to go about it, but um, a lot of times you'll end up with overexposed shots. And I'll show you how to fix that and how to quickly uh, make the uh, sunspots pop in your image. So let's get started with that. So you've got your single exposure of your sun, and in most cases. Uh, it's slightly overexposed it's going to look like this and um, overexposing the sun is, is not hard to do so don't beat yourself up uh, it's really hard to tell uh, on a DSLR or a live view or also for that matter on um, a planetary webcam whether you're overexposed or not what you get on the screen and what you're looking at as you're doing it is often two different things but what I like to do is zoom in to where I've got the leading edge here of the sun and I can see a pretty good portion of, of the actual sun itself. Now Soho's website showed me the um, the prominences of the sunspots and I can vaguely see one here. And what I'm going to do, and this is just a simple edit, but um, go into curves and generally in astrophotography you're going to bring this way up and that's to get uh, the fine details of nebula and that sort of thing to pop in your uh, exposure. But when you're working with the sun, that's counterintuitive. So what I'm going to do is, is, is bring this down. And as you see it come down, you'll, you'll notice I'm starting to get some uh, evidence of the sunspots. Now, the next thing I do is go into exposure and the toggle the uh, gamma correction and I'm going to bring that up show you what that does you see how they're all starting to uh, pop out now you got to be careful with that because if you take it too far you're going to wash your edge out but those are just uh, two simple edits that you can do to quickly uh, find your sunspots and make them prominent in your photo and uh, there's a whole lot more in-depth techniques you can use to get more detail and that sort of thing, but uh, this is the easiest way that I know to do it, and I thought I would share that with everybody. So ultimately, you have uh, three major options, that being uh, just a mylar or uh, black polymer filter, 
in the case of black polymer you're going to have an, uh, an orange image but that really doesn't matter you could add it to white very easily um, mylar is going to show you the image of the sun in, in, in all white uh, and then there's like the coronado and that sort of thing and uh, I'd also like to throw in there that you can get solar eclipse glasses really cheap and they're really cool but um, more dangerous than typical just sun solar viewing is uh, checking out an eclipse so uh, do some research on that if you plan on doing it and also there's there's planetary transits like mercury transit and that sort of thing the sun is a really interesting object and um, it's one that's it's often overlooked or uh, just forgotten about and uh, if you're really into astronomy and there, there's those days sometimes it seems like a week before you get a really good night of viewing and uh, you want to go out and do something that's one of the things you can do uh, my next video I plan is uh, maybe showing a little bit how to use a sextant and that sort of thing and how to uh, locate planets during the daytime uh, there's also the uh, the brighter stars like Sirius and that sort of thing and uh, they can be found in the daytime if, if they're above the horizon you just have to know where to look and you have to have some really advanced techniques to find them if you don't have a really good go-to telescope but it can be done and uh, and I might might go into that in some some detail but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, I'll see you next time clear skies